People call us all the time. They say, I'm new to stacking. A lot of people who watch your videos, they'll call us and say, you know, what should I start with? SD Bullion is giving away a monster box of 2024 Tree of Life silver coins. For a chance to win, sign up at sdbullion.com slash sweepstakes. Hey, what's up, Harry? Good to see you, Silver Dragon. Yeah, good to in. see you. Good to be here. We got the whole crew here today. What's up, Richard? See you, Silver Dragon. Brandon, Adrian, and we got Bill, and it looks like a new guy. Brandon. Hey, Brandon, I'm Silver Dragon. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The first thing that I see when I come in the shop now is this tray right here, and it's got, uh, it's got our picks, yeah? This is an idea that Mike came up with. Okay. We all have our current favorites, you know. There's something in the showcases that every given week or so, we'll say, gosh, I love that coin. So Mike thought it'd be a great idea to share how we feel about certain coins with the customers. So each of us have our weekly picks here. And so for Harry, we got uh, Silver Eagle. Well, not just any Silver Eagle. It's the first year issue, the 1986, which is a very uh, low relatively low mintage compared to the other years, so semi-key date. What are the other ones you picked? I've got a, a, a portrait dollar. This was what our U.S. silver dollar was based on, the uh, Spanish eight reals. That's got cool. The, the motif. This is the first picture in the red book. Double check me, folks. Wow. And a beautiful, beautiful ancient Greek coin from the territories in Italy. This is from... Um, 281 BC. Coins have only been around since about 700 BC, so this is a relatively early coin of any type. I did include some dragon picks, so if you come into the shop, you can see what I'm picking. We got uh, Silver Round. It has a dragon on it, so... You're the dragon. <laughs> yes, very fitting. Uh, another Silver Round. This is the Amark one, and then we have a Canadian Maple Leaf, which is my favorite coin for the year. So we got some bullion picks there as well. Have Adrian tell you about the colors on that one. It's um, made after the flowing hair dollar. That was a US official release. This is obviously a bullion piece, but this one just caught my eye and Harry's eye too, just the beautiful color that it has. Yeah, it's that's got the gorgeous. blues, the purple, and it's a premium round as well. So really nice piece. So it's kind of like a replica type thing? Uh, yes, so it's more of a, um, a tribute coin. And uh, Harry, you were telling me there's something new over here in the shop. Brandon came up with this fantastic idea, and it's interesting here, if I can just preface this, ideas flow really nicely here because we have what I would consider a mastermind group. We're all kind of pulling in the same direction. We're all concentrating on being successful coin dealers. And because of that, Really cool ideas percolate to the top quite often. Yesterday was Brandon's turn, and he came up with these bags called uh, barter bags. And what they are is two troy ounces of U.S. constitutional silver at a <laughs> price at $49 is um, a little bit less than buying two silver rounds. And I'll let, uh, let Brandon describe the, the contents to you and, and why he came up with this. A lot of people ask about bartering like mm -hmm. what goes into it, how, what can they use to barter. Um, and um, th this is kind of a fun idea. It keeps it interesting. And also um, there's a lot of variety in here. Uh, this is constitutional silver, so it's it's fractional silver. So it's perfect for those, those purposes of bartering. Uh, and something like this, you just come in, you know you have two troy ounces. You don't have to figure it out. It's been done for you. And like I said, these are varied. So some of them have um, half dollars or some of them are more you know, heavy in quarters. Um, so there's, it's kind of fun because you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, so whichever one you grab, it's going to have U.S. constitutional silver, and it will be two troy ounces, and it's only 49 bucks, so cheaper than two rounds. Yeah, I think it's a little better deal. I think it's a little more fun, and it serves the purpose of stacking, also uh, the purpose of, of bartering, too, if that ever comes to that. So. Yeah, that's a great idea. It was inspired. I was just blown away by it. Yeah. Well, speaking of silver rounds, um, they normally are one of the cheapest things in the shop. 
for sure. Can we take a look at your Absolutely. selection? So each one of these is $25. Yes. And you have a large variety here. I guess probably the first question, if people are new to silver or coins, um, would be what is a round? What does that even mean? A silver round implies a, a disc, a coin looking thing that is made by a private refiner. It has no denomination on it like a dollar or a pound or a shilling or anything like that, but rather just the weight, one troy ounce, this says three nines fine silver. The US government considers it counterfeiting to put a denomination on these. In fact, years ago, someone actually went to jail by making what was called Liberty Dollars. And by putting a denomination on it, it became uh, a counterfeiting uh, crime. Mm. But these are perfectly legal, made by a, a myriad of private refiners out there. People call us all the time. They say, I'm new to stacking. A lot of people who watch your videos, they'll call us and say, you know, what should I start with? And before you get into premium rounds, like what Adrian showed earlier, or even government ounces like maples or or uh, Krugerrands or even our beautiful Silver Eagle, why not buy the same amount of silver at the lowest possible premium and still have the same amount of treasure? So for instance, you can buy any of these rounds today at $25. A maple or a Krugerrand would cost you 27. An Eagle would be 28. And we love all those coins, but if you truly are getting started until you learn what you wanna focus on, have fun with this. There's so much variety, maybe get one of each style that you encounter. And in doing so, you'll build your stack and build your uh, enthusiasm and your knowledge base until you decide what to focus on. Yeah, I'm curious, maybe Adrian could touch on this. Um, the buffaloes seem to be the most popular. I mean, have those always been sort of more common than the other rounds? Definitely, the, uh, the buffalo rounds, it's one of the most popular ones. Uh, many different mints make them. And uh, I mean, it's the demands there. So uh, most new stackers actually go for the uh, buffalo rounds as it's something they've seen or collected and that they might already have in their collection. Yeah, these are just gorgeous. So the ones you have here are from Golden State Mint, but probably all of the private mints have some version of the buffalo, I'm guessing. Yeah, and the buffalo is also you know, so popular that a lot of these rounds are kind of made to um, simulate the $1 buffalo coins that the United States Mint released. Interesting. So I thought the U.S. Mint only ever made the gold buffaloes, but they made a silver version oh, yeah. as well? Yeah, and it's nominated by uh, $1. And it's actually not an ounce of silver. It's truly a silver dollar, 0.773, just right. like an old Morgan or Peace dollar. Oh. But this was such a beautiful and popular commemorative piece that the rounds kind of emanated from that experience in 2001 to where there's probably you know, 15 companies now making the silver rounds with the buffalo and Indian motif. It was a tribute to the buffalo nickel. Okay. And then those followed. So I guess the buffalo nickel was the original and everything copied off that. Definitely. For sure. You also, the cool thing too with our rounds here, you're also able to pick up some nice vintage rounds. For example, these Amarks. Mm -hmm. These are these are premium rounds, you know, and, you know, we, we put them in here. So, you know, we have some vintage silver collectors and... You know, it gives you a good option to pick up some nice vintage silver as well. Yeah, I know some of these, if you look on eBay, like the uh, the Amark ones, um, some of the other ones over here. Uh, in fact, I think these are also Amark. Yeah, look at that. These will go for pretty good money on eBay. Yeah, so I mean, you know, $30, $35, $40 yeah. maybe. Yeah, I know a lot of stackers that they specialize on vintage. I mean, if you can pick up a one-ounce buffalo, you know, for the same price as one of these vintage rounds, I'm picking up the vintage round myself. Yeah, a little bit of extra premium to someone out there. Yes, but yeah. I guess it all depends on what your goal is for your stack. I mean, if you're just looking to get ounces and keep your stack looking the same and consistent, then the buffalo is the way to go. Yeah, I agree. What do you think, Richard? If you had to pick between all of these rounds we got on the table right now, what do you think you would pick? Oh, I'd probably be with Sage and pick up some of the uh, vintage stuff. I remember if you go to places, even, even here sometimes you'll... To, get like Hoffman and Hoffman rounds and I've oh, filled yeah. up tubes of unicorns before and you know turned those in and got myself even more silver. I remember just when the silver was uh, lower and the, the premiums on, on silver was mm -hmm. a little less I got a bunch of 
Hoffman. Hoffman's about two tubes, and then I turned nice. that into about five tubes of silver in the end. Wow, so you were able to find a rare collectible round and then flip it for more money just to get more silver with. Mm -hmm. So what about these ones here, which appear to be, I guess, heavily toned compared to the other mm. rounds? What do you think, Bill? Are they worth the same? Or is that more valuable? Um, so far as us buying them across the counter, it's going to be exactly the same. But just obviously from a subjective personal viewpoint, you might enjoy different color toning that appears on silver. Obviously, silver oxidizes. Yeah. And it also changes colors based on exposure to other chemicals. It might be in paper or in the air that it's exposed to, like sulfur can turn it different types of colors. Um, so in that, some people enjoy that, other people want to dip it out. Obviously with coins, with vintage coins, we don't recommend that you dip the toning off, but right. when, when it's a bullion piece, that's more a matter of personal preference. So if people have rounds that are blast white, beautiful, or toned, they could clean them, leave them the way they are, it doesn't really matter. Most coin shops will treat them the same. Yeah, most coin shops are going to treat it by weight unless it's something truly exceptional. And the other the other aspect of that is you don't want to you don't want to scrub rounds because silver nine 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 silver is very soft, softer even than coin silver, and so you just you basically want to dip that out mm, if you wanted to change the look right. of it. Yeah, honestly, I prefer the toning. Like if I were to pick up something like this one here, I would just. I would leave it the way it is. I mean, I think Absolutely. it's gorgeous. Yeah. Well, we certainly learned a lot today about rounds, Harry. Yeah. I hope if there's some new stackers out there, they maybe will feel more comfortable up about picking them up and sort of what they're getting. It's a <clears throat> low premium, excellent way to start. And some people just continue on with rounds and never graduate to coins or higher premium. It's what you want. Yeah, it's what I started with when I first started my stacking journey. Yes. And I think really for any beginner, that's the way to go. Agreed. Yeah. All Great right. Well, thank you. you so much. Thank Great you. to see you. Nice to meet you, Brandon. Nice to meet you. And Brandon. Nice I, to see you. I guess you're Brandon too. You're Brandon one. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, good to see you. Adrian and Richard. Take it easy. You too.